To see our full range of videos and be notified of new releases, please press the subscribe button. It's free. The occupation of Poland by the Germans and Soviets in 1939 was not the end of the Polish armed forces, but the beginning of their astonishing contribution to Allied victory. In 1939, the borders of Poland were very different than today. Most notable is the German province of East Prussia on the Baltic coast. The German battleship Schleswig-Holstein was in Gdansk Harbour on a friendly diplomatic visit. Dawn, 1st of September 1939, the Schleswig-Holstein opens fire with 11-inch guns on the Vesterplatte garrison. World War II had started. The German 4th Army attacked Poland from the north. The 3rd Army attacked from East Prussia. The 8th and 10th Armies attacked from Germany towards Katowice. The 14th Army attacked from Czechoslovakia. Undermanned and ill-equipped, the Polish Army fought gallantly and ferociously. 17th of September 1939 Russia attacks Poland. Unable to fight on two fronts, the Polish army capitulates. The Polish government never formally surrendered and would continue in exile in London. Thousands of Polish soldiers were taken prisoner by the Germans and the Soviets. 100,000 Polish soldiers escaped to neighbouring countries and would make their way to France and Great Britain to continue the fight. Battle Honours, the Battle for France The Polish army under General Sikorsky was still being organised when the Battle for France began. Still not fully equipped, the Polish formations were rushed to the front line. The Polish 1st Grenadier Division suffered 45% casualties, fighting a bitter rearguard battle protecting the retreating French army. The Polish 10th Armoured Brigade also fought a ferocious battle covering the retreat of the French 7th Army Corps. The Polish 10th Armoured Brigade drained fuel from abandoned vehicles to counter-attack with 17 tanks and retake Mumba. On the 25th of June 1940, when the French surrendered, the Poles were told to surrender too. Instead, they destroyed their remaining armour and made their way to Britain. A 5,000-man Polish division arrived at Saint-Nazar to find British ships had been sent for them. French authorities forbid the British ships from entering French waters, but the Royal Navy ignores them. Demoralised and dejected, the Poles, on arrival in England, were surprised to be given a hero's welcome. 1,400 Polish soldiers died fighting to defend France. 4,000 more were wounded. Battle Honours, the Battle for Narvik. In early April 1940, the Polish Independent Brigade was sent to Narvik in Norway. Narvik was strategically important as it was from where ships took Swedish iron ore to German war factories. The Polish Independent Brigade landed at Arkenes and routed the German Alpine troops on the hills overlooking Narvik for the French troops to land at Narvik. Later, they covered the withdrawal of French and British troops at a cost of 97 killed and 187 wounded. Battle honours to Brook. Thousands of Poles interned in Romania escaped by ship to French-controlled Syria. In Syria, they established the Polish Independent Rifle Brigade. When France surrendered, the French authorities demanded the Poles also surrender. They refused and marched with all their weapons into British-held Palestine. From Palestine, the British transferred them to Egypt. 18th of April 1941, the Polish Independent Rifle Brigade landed at Tobruk to support the besieged Australians. The Polish Independent Rifle Brigade survived in caves and holes in the ground. In stifling heat, plagued by flies and under constant artillery and air bombardment, they conducted night raids on enemy targets, destroying enemy positions and bringing back prisoners. Fighting shoulder to shoulder, 
with the ninth Australian division, the Diggers. They share their celebrated title with their Polish comrades in arms, the Desert Rats. 22nd of June, 1941. Germany attacked Russia, requiring them to join forces with the Allies and agreeing an amnesty for Polish prisoners in slave labour camps. Mistreated, malnourished and exhausted, 114,000 refugees were permitted to move to the British zone in Persia and from there to Palestine. After training, most of the Polish soldiers joined Allied forces fighting in the Italian camp. Battle Honours, Monte Cassino. After landing in Italy and months of heavy fighting, the Allies came up against the formidable Gustav Line. Hinged on Monte Cassino, the Gustav Line would stop the Allies dead in their tracks. The difficult terrain was inaccessible for tanks and Monte Cassino would have to be taken by infantry. After three failed attacks on Monte Cassino, the Polish 2nd Corps was asked to spearhead a fourth attack. On the 16th of May, a Polish patrol found a soft spot in the German defences and immediately went into action, taking the southern end of the ridge. The 3rd Carpathian Division fought its way up the rocky hillside and hoisted the Polish and British flags over the ruins of the monastery. Battle honours Normandy, Calm and Falaise. End of July 1944, 13,000 men, 381 tanks of the Polish 1st Armour Division were in Normandy, attached to the 1st Canadian Army. After weeks of stalemate, the 1st Polish Armour Division and 2nd Canadian Corps were to spearhead the calm breakout. The Poles encountered German Tiger tanks of the 12th SS Pass Division and quickly lost 40 tanks. The Poles fought their way towards Falaise and closed the pocket. On top of Hill 262, the Poles faced the whole of the retreating German 7th Army. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps counterattacked to the rear of the Poles in an attempt to open up an escape route for the German 7th Army. For three days and nights, constantly under mortar and artillery fire, and in vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting, the Poles clung on by their fingertips. The Poles called Hill 262 the Mace, where they destroyed 70 tanks, 500 vehicles and took 5,500 prisoners. Amongst the prisoners were Poles pressed into the German army. Many were recruited as a supply of experienced trained replacements for the 1st Polish Armoured Division. Battle Honours Arnhem during the planning of Operation Market Garden, Polish officers protested that the drop zones were too far away from Arnhem Bridge, eight miles, but were ignored. 21st of September 1944, delayed time and again by fog, with no element of surprise, the 1st Polish Independent Parachute Brigade of 1,700 Polish paratroopers dropped near Deal, south of the Rhine. The British lightly armed airborne troops had been fighting alone for four days. A swimmer came across the river with the message. The British urgently need every man and every round of ammunition you can muster. 22nd of September, 50 Polish paratroopers crossed the Rhine to support the trapped British paratroops. 23rd of September, 1944. Boats eventually arrive, but there are not enough. That night, 200 more Polish paratroops crossed the Rhine to reinforce the Ustawik perimeter. 24th of September 1944, British and Canadian engineers with 37 boats evacuate paratroops across the Rhine. The Poles are amongst the rear guard as the airborne troops withdrew through the darkness and rain. 2,200 men reached the safety of the southern bank of the Rhine. 7,500 are either dead or prisoners of war. Shoulder to shoulder with the Canadians and the British, the 1st Polish Armour Division fought its way through France, Belgium and Holland. Germany's largest naval base, Wilhelmshaven, surrendered to the Poles on the 6th of May 
1945. The Germans had treated the Polish people appallingly following the German invasion of 1939. The German people now expected to be treated the same. Regardless, the Poles acted properly and humanely towards the German people. At the Yalta conference, the Allies, in exchange for the USSR entering the war against Japan, had recognised the puppet government installed in Poland by the Soviet Union and agreed to vast tracts of land to be ceded to them in the east. In exchange for smaller tracts of land in the west being ceded to Poland, Polish servicemen felt betrayed by the Allies. Now they could never go home. Those who did were treated as enemy collaborators and faced show trials, labour camps and even execution. With the war ended, a great victory parade was planned in London. Under pressure from Stalin, the Polish armed forces were not invited. The RAF protested strongly and the Polish pilots were issued with an invitation. They politely declined and would not march without their fellow servicemen. In 2005, the British government apologised and the Polish veterans marched past the Cenotaph in London on Remembrance Sunday for the first time in 60 years. Following World War II, 150,000 Polish servicemen made their homes in the UK. My wife's dad was one of them. Thank you for watching. Please press the subscribe button to see our full range of videos and be notified of new releases. It's free.